Hi, I'm John Dobson. Coming up, this, my accurate transcription of the Mission Impossible TV theme. I'm going to play it through at speed, and then there follows a very detailed tutorial about how, you, how to play it. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So, it's all about rhythm guys, so what you're going to do is I'm going to give you a little exercise to help you play this. The left hand riff first of all, once you've got the left, the left hand riff nailed, the rest of it is really quite easy. The fingering is, is a sort of personal thing, this is the way I teach um, my students to play it. You don't have to finger it like this, I quite like doing it like this. But let's get the rhythm right first, a little rhythm exercise first of all. I'm just going to play a G. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You might say, well, there's a note missing, isn't there? Yes, of course there is. The repeat of the G I've taken out to help you get used to this. We'll do it the other way now. I'm going to play the G and then I'm going to go F, F sharp. You notice I went B flat C on the top of that first one. Now, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to add the extra G. One and two and three, four, five. One and two and three, four, five. So first I go from two to four. One and two and three. And then try it the other way. Four and two. Four to two. One and two and three. Now I'm going to start from the beginning, put it all together. One and two and three, four, five. Swap four for two. Four, five, swap two for four, four, five, one and two and three, four, five, one and two and three, four, five, one and two and three, four, five. Once you got that, the rest is easy. So the right hand riff, we are going B flat G. You need to kind of get your fingers into the keys. Otherwise you're gonna find it really tricky. So my third finger is slipping in between those two black keys. The F sharp and the G sharp, you like. So I've got a B flat on my little finger. G, D. And then the low, top two notes are the same. But the bottom note is going down chromatically each time. Over onto the B flat to C. So the bottom note went D, C sharp, C, 
B flat C. Let me put the left hand in. One and two, three, four, five. One and two, three, four, five. For the second strain of the G minor riff in the right hand, we're actually going to go above the notes at the end rather than below, which means we finger the B flat and the G, still the same two notes, but an octave lower, differently. I've got two on the B flat. One, two, three, four, five. The top note comes down chromatically, just like it did before. Three times from F to E to E flat. And then at the end of it, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One and. So apart from the last two notes, I did not play on the first beat of the bar at all. That's the tricky bit. So that riff on G, having played it eight times, so we're in bar 16, we're going to move up to C via B flat, B, then we're on C. B flat F, C, C, B flat B, B flat F, swap again and get down to bring us back to the G riff. So the right hand, this is the C minor version of the right hand riff if you like. So we're going, I'll put left hand in as well. One and two, and three, four, five, one and two, and three, four, five, one and two, and three, four, five, B flat. Leading us back to G. It's almost exactly the same as it was before. We're just starting on E flat instead of B flat. We've got a C instead of a G. We've still got the chromatic thing at the bottom where we go from on G, then F sharp, then F. Then we go over onto the E flat and land on the F. So we've gone back to our second strain of G minor, which you play exactly the same. Four bars, except one subtle difference. At the end, instead of moving up to C, chromatically, we do the same, but we move up to D. Because that's the last note before the power chords at the end. One, two, three, four, five, one. So that's all you've got to do with that second strain of G minor. So the ending. What we have is an inversion of two power chords. We're going, we're going from F to G. Now that's two power chords in root position. They're five notes apart. F and C, and then G and D. However, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to put the F on the top instead of on the bottom. And the same with the G on the top instead of the bottom, making what we call an inversion. So go like this. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's on the fourth beat. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's the ending. Right hand anyway. So the ending in the left hand, according to your ability, either go F to G, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Or if your hands are a little bit bigger and you and you've got the technical ability to do this, play two power chords in root position like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. That sounds pretty cool with the right hand. You've got two inversions of power chords on top of each other. There you have it. I hope you've sussed that out quite well. If you have and you like that video, then please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do two more videos. I'm going to do an advanced jazz 12 bar version of it. And I'm also going to do a multi-instrumental loop version. That's probably going to be the next one. So look out for those, please. Thank you.